So I was having this conversation with a client of mine and he was talking about one of his clients. Now, now this client of mine, uh, he basically runs like a specialty marketing agency helping clients in one specific industry generate leads. And he does really well for his clients. And he was saying that with one particular client, they had generated about 7,000 leads last year. And of those leads, like they're good leads. So about 25% of those leads converted. And uh, he was realizing with this client that what that meant, like you take seven, let's, let's, let's round it. Let's say the number is 8,000 leads and 25% convert. So 2,000 of them convert. What that means is that 6,000 leads, 75% of the leads are still sitting there. They're still sitting there in a database somewhere. They're still sitting there like as a, as a call record and, or as a, as an email address or a form submission or whatever, like they're, they're still there and they came to you for a reason. They came to you because you offered some type of information, you offered some type of service, you offered something where they were actually interested. Like you offered every good Every good offer is a solution to a problem. And that problem can be like a problem like we think of it, or it can be an unfulfilled desire. But basically, you offered to solve their problem. You offered to fulfill their desire. And they came to you and like gave you information. They, they shared their information with you. They called you whatever. And the only reason that they were willing to do that is because on some level, they were interested. They were interested in doing business with you. And then for whatever reason, for whatever reason, they weren't converted. Now, in this particular case, like these people, when they're not converted, what happens, and this happens with most businesses, I mean, a, a really good direct response business will never let this happen, but that tends to be the exception, not the rule. In most businesses, what happens is those leads don't get very much follow-up. They don't get very much, um, you know, they don't receive much information from you after. They don't receive offers in the mail. They don't receive any kind of consistent, consistent uh, contact that is bringing value to their lives, that is helping them make the buying decision in your market, that is uh, actually bringing them closer to the sale, that's getting the people who, who weren't ready to buy then but are ready to buy now to raise their hand and say, hey, uh, talk to me now because now I'm more interested or now I'm more ready for your offer. So like using using the market awareness model of of a market moves through the uh, through the phases of being unaware of the problem that they that, that, that you can solve through your offer, then they become problem aware, meaning they understand, OK, these symptoms, I have these symptoms and it means that I have this problem or challenge that that I want to have solved. And then they become solution aware, meaning they become aware that there is a generic solution, like a, a, it's possible to solve the problem. So they start looking for how can I solve this problem? And then they become aware of you, your specific solution, your your product, your service, whatever it is. And then they become ready for a deal. So if you do lead generation and 25% of your leads converted, that means when you did lead generation, probably about 25% of your leads were kind of in that they became you aware like they really understood your unique solution and they were deal ready, like they were ready to take action. And for whatever reason, like we go through times in our lives where we're not ready to buy one particular thing or another, but I, I equated it to like, a, a, you know, selling cars or buying cars. When you start shopping for cars, you actually start shopping like months or maybe even years ahead of when you're actually going to buy your next car. You start to notice other cars that are on the road. You start to think what kind of car, like, would I be interested in that kind of car? Would I be interested in that kind of car? And you start to like set your sights on some different cars and you're thinking about it and you're thinking about it. But then something happens and it's like a switch goes off in your brain. So, so you, you have become problem aware, you know, for a while you're unaware, you're like happy with your current car, right? Then you become problem aware, meaning like, oh, you know, I, I would really like to replace my car. 
And then you start looking around and you identify different cars that are on the road and you become solution aware. Like, yeah, I like, you know, maybe I like trucks or maybe our next car needs to be a minivan or um, I, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm ready for a sports car or whatever it is, right? But you define like, oh, I'm interested in this. And you may even narrow it down to some specific categories, which means you become you aware, like you become aware of the specific brands that you're interested in, the specific models that you're interested in. And so you start looking and looking and then something happens, that switch flips and, and suddenly you're like ready to buy a car. And as soon as that switch flips, you're, you're like usually one or two weekends away from just hitting the car lot and getting the car, going to the dealership, talking to, to them, whatever, like you, you get that car really quick. And that's how car buying happens. And it's not just how car buying happens. It's how so many things happen. So flipping that back to being, to coming from like the business side, the, the marketer side, the, the salesperson side, most of the people who come into your business are not at that phase where they're like, you know, with the dealership, it's, it's actually really rare that someone walks into a dealership and like start shopping until basically they're deal ready. They may be picking between models, right? But they're basically looking for a really good deal. Uh, the last time I bought a car, we actually picked out we picked out the van we wanted on the dealership's website. We went in there. We had a couple others that we were potentially going to visit, um, which gave us some leverage for having negotiations um, and actually led to a better price of, of the van that we bought. But we were basically ready. Um, the thing with with other types of lead generation is oftentimes you get people who are a little earlier on in the buying process, um, and and so they are they're you know they they may be starting to be you aware, but really they're like solution aware. They're they're really like trying to identify what's the best solution here, or maybe they're just problem aware. Maybe they're just like in that research phase, and so. Your job, your job, like, of course, your job initially when all those leads come in the door is to get the people who are like ready to take action to take action and like help them solve their problem, help them fulfill their desire, whatever it is that they that they want out of the transaction. Your job is to help them get it. But for all those people who turn out to not be ready, your job then is to uh, is, is, is to help move them through that awareness spectrum. And the way that you do that is through consistent follow-up. So you you put out things that help them really understand the problem, um, the, the challenge that they're facing, why like whatever symptoms represent a need to take action now, you help agitate that. Um, and then you help them define, you help them become solution aware, um, define what an ideal solution needs to do. And... Um, when you help them define what the ideal solution needs to do, um, then you help them understand why your solution matches what an ideal solution needs to do. So you make them you aware and your product aware and you position your product as ideal. Um, and then and then you make them an offer. You, you make them an offer to get them to move forward. And so... A lot of times in businesses, like there's this desire to always be bringing in the new customers, the new customers, the new customers, the new leads, the new leads, the new leads. And that's that's great. That's that's awesome. Um, and it's critically important for a business to be able to bring in new customers and new leads. But those tend to be not quite as high ROI, not quite as hot of leads as um, the people who already expressed interest who already raised their hand and said, Hey, I'm, I'm a potential buyer here. I'm, I'm interested in what you're doing and uh, just implementing a program, implementing an approach where you're constantly in contact with your market, where you're constantly in contact with those leads, where you're, you are constantly connecting with them and, 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 and looking for ways that you can serve them now, even if it didn't make sense for them to get your service before, that is like your hottest source of leads and even like applied down to the uh, applied down to the um to to the level of like a solo service business like a copywriting business whatever 
I have relationships with people in the industry. And if I'm going to go out and try and get new client work today, I'm, I'm actually not trying to get new client work today. But if I was trying to go out and get new client work today, the first thing that I would do is I would go to all my past clients and I would go to everybody who I've ever talked to about doing work with me. And I would reach out to them and say, hey, um, I, I would like to help you. I would like to do something with you. Uh, would you be interested in doing that today? And through time, as you build your business, like that continuously is like a well that you can draw from. And it has such potential for you to just find ways to keep serving those people who are already in your universe. And, and even like uh, you want an even hotter source of leads, it's to find a way to be of even greater service to your current clients, to make another offer, to, uh, to receive value from you at a higher level in exchange for more investment. And when you do that, like there is going to be some of them who are ready to do that and who will happily give you more money today for that. So um, this is just a reminder because I mean, even really smart marketers don't always implement this at the level that they could. And especially if you're working with small businesses, it's very easy to let, you know, today's leads and then the next day's leads and the next day's leads and the next day's leads who didn't convert right away kind of slip into the background. And honestly, like when I was when I was selling, when I was proactively uh, like on the phone with prospects selling IT training, which was at this point more than a decade ago, but still very relevant to today's selling environment. One of the things that made me so effective as a salesperson is that I systematized the the process of following up to the point where I was always staying in touch with my leads, re, uh, basically until they told me that they were no longer a prospect, like they were no they no longer had any chance of buying. And it was always from this perspective of, hey, you know, I would like to be able to help you. Do, uh, you know, has any uh, new challenge come up? Has has um, has anything changed in your situation? It was it was always relevant to the previous conversation that we had, and I kept basic notes like for every contact. But I never let a lead die. I never let somebody just fade off into the sunset. Um, versus, you know, versus continuously contacting them until they say, well, you know what, we bought this different solution or, you know what, uh, we're just no longer in the market. But most often what would happen it was, is it was just a matter of time, you know, whether that was five contacts or 25 or more contacts, it was just a matter of time before that person who expressed interest up front turned into a, hey, uh, you know, check your fax machine because you have a $30,000 purchase order coming. And yeah, I, I mean, that to me was a great, powerful lesson about how hot these leads can be, even when they were leads that other salespeople would have given up on, you know, after five or seven contacts or whatever internal rule they use for when somebody's no longer a good potential customer. So um, that's that's the lesson that I have for you today. My name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I hope you've gotten a ton of value out of this. Um, I, I, I would like to know, actually, I, I'm doing this thing where it, if you'll leave a comment below, I would really appreciate it that actually rates this on a scale of one to 10. How much value did you get and why? What was your biggest takeaway? What's your biggest action item? What are you going to do as a result of watching this? So check that out and, and, and leave a comment below with, with your rating and, and why you found it valuable. Also, make sure you click that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you in the future. Also, so the magical algorithms of the internet know to share it with more people like you who can get value from it. If you know somebody in your life who would get value from this directly, you can share it with them directly and subscribe. Follow me here. You can also go to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com to get my daily emails Monday through Friday covering marketing, copywriting, business building, selling, and more. Everything relevant to growing your business through um, direct response, advertising, selling, marketing, etc. Uh, plus, I am releasing new trainings that are exclusive to email subscribers. So you'll want to check those out as well. And the only way you're going to do that is by going to BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. Now, before I go, I do want to say I'm going to throw in two more links 
I'm going to throw in two more links in the description. Um, one is to the message market match golden key video that I recorded recently that um, that really talks about the, the market awareness spectrum and copywriting and how to structure your message based on the different levels of awareness that people are at, because that's a, that's a way to go much deeper. If you haven't watched that yet, you'll want to check that out. The link is in the description. Also, I have a training called the most valuable customer strategy that talks about how to maximize um, the, the lifetime value of every customer that you work with um, by addressing 11 different points in the customer lifecycle that I think is incredibly relevant to this. Um, so you want to check that out as well. Again, the links are in the description. And uh, again, my name is Roy Fur. This has been a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. Thanks for watching. I hope you have gotten 10 out of 10 value. That's my goal every time. And I look forward to seeing you again in your next video issue. I'll see you soon. Bye.